So let's talk briefly about dienes, trienes, and polyenes. The reason I say briefly is that we're more interested in the reactivities and don't focus as much on the naming. So what I've got up here is the simple one hexene. You should be able to name, it's a terminal alkene, and we just have the E and E here to designate that we have a double bond. But let's say we have two double bonds. Well, there's a couple of ways that we can describe where this double bond goes. So let's say we have one, four, hexadiene. Sorry, hexadiene. Now a few comments on this. The hexa here, naming a parent chain as you expect to. The di here is going to refer to the fact that we have two double bonds. Now, there is a way to describe it if the double bonds are separated by more than a single carbon-carbon single bond. And honestly, to tell you how often this comes up, I actually had to look at my cheat sheet before I started this video and still forgot what the word is. So, the word here is an unconjugate, oh that's embarrassing, that's an unconjugated diene. So what do we mean by unconjugated? Well, a conjugated diene is where the double double bonds are separated by a single carbon carbon single bond. So if we redraw hexene here, our one, three hexadiene is what's called a conjugated diene. And these are very different than the unconjugated, specifically because the electrons in conjugated pi bonds, pi bonds that are close, separated by a single carbon, carbon, single bond, are actually associated with each other. They interact, and this is not predicted by Lewis theory, this is actually what comes about from a conclusion of molecular orbital theory, that basically these electrons like to work in coordination with each other, and they're actually more stable than if we have unconjugated. Now, what if there's no separation between the two? Well, in that case, one, two, three, four, five, six, this would be one, two, hexadiene, and this is what's called a cumulated double bond. So cumulated means, you know, add on to. In this case, we have double bonds back to back. Now this is actually less stable than the conjugated form. So when we have things like this, these are actually incredibly hard to form compounds that are not long lived. So when it comes to dienes, one, we name them by giving the double bond position and doing that di in there. Second is that we've got three different ways to describe them. We have unconjugated, meaning that they're in the same compound, but they're not near each other. Conjugated, meaning that the double bonds are near each other and they're separated by a single, each of the bonds are separated by a single carbon, uh, carbon single bond, and then cumulated where they're on top of each other. Now let's say we had a third triple bond, third double bond. So let's go this one. This would be one, three, five, hexatriene. And this is super conjugated. This is conjugated. H double bond here is separated by a carbon carbon single bond. Now, the reason, another reason we don't focus on this is this is going to give rise to what's called aromaticity, and we're going to talk about localized versus delocalized pi electrons. This is actually something that's Hubble. Uh, handled much more in organic chemistry because it's much more relevant to um, reactions of aromaticity and reactions of benzene rings. So organic one level we're going to address the fact that there are things that are like dienes, trienes, and polyenes. So polyenes mean that we have a lot of double bonds. Know what it means for them to be conjugated, but really this is going to be a concept that shows up a lot more when we start talking in higher level organic chemistry courses about reactions because this is what's going to give rise to aromaticity.